Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a Tech Talk video from Eric's Electronics Workbench. So in the previous video, I started the troubleshooting on this HP 5258A sensitive prescaler plugin. And that plugin module is used with this HP 5245L frequency counter, and the repairs on this instrument were shown in another recent video. Now as I was starting the troubleshooting on this plugin and working on that circuit board, in the previous video I had mentioned that there's a device on that circuit board called a tunnel diode, but I didn't go into the details about how to test it. So it's just a small speck of a part on that board and quite delicate. Now tunnel diodes have some very unusual properties. So if you try and test them with a digital multimeter in the diode check function, you'll just get a very low voltage drop in both directions in most cases. And if you try and test them in the resistance mode, you know, it'll look like a low resistance. So you might think that the diode is shorted. So let's take a look at what actually makes the tunnel diode so unusual. And then I'll show you one of the ways that you can test it. So taking a look at this graph of a tunnel diode, starting at the center point on the horizontal scale and going to the left is reverse voltage. From the center point to the right is forward voltage. On the vertical scale from the center down is reverse current and from the center up is forward current. Now when reverse voltage is applied to a tunnel diode, you can see that immediately you have a reverse current. In fact, it doesn't take very much reverse voltage to have a noticeable increase in the reverse current. So think about how that compares to a traditional rectifier diode where you would have tens if not hundreds of volts of reverse voltage and almost no reverse current flows until it gets to the point of breakdown and then the diode would conduct, but normally you don't have that reverse current flow. Now if we take a look at when forward voltage is applied, immediately we're getting forward current. And again, that's different than a traditional rectifier diode that has to be forward biased and overcome about you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts until it really conducts. So again, we're getting an immediate current that's flowing with very little forward voltage applied. But you notice that as the forward voltage is increased, we're seeing an increase in the current until this point right here, which is known as voltage peak. Now at voltage peak, there's a very unique property in the tunnel diode. And you can see that that happens right here, and this is known as negative resistance. So think about what's happening in this region. As the forward voltage is increasing, the current is actually falling through the diode. So a very unusual property. And the current will continue to fall down until it hits this valley. So this is known as the valley voltage. And then from this point in the valley, as you increase the forward voltage, you're getting an increase in the forward current. So very unique properties of the tunnel diode. And you can see it right here where this region goes through this center point. This is why the tunnel diode is very difficult to test and you really can't test it with your digital multimeter in the diode check function or trying to take a resistance measurement across the diode because essentially it's always wanting to conduct anywhere along this curve. You know, it always wants to conduct either in the forward or reverse voltage areas. So as an example, I'll measure one of these diodes and I'll show you how to take that measurement. So I have this diode right here with the orange white marking on it. So there's some specifications that are given. So let's take some measurements on that diode and see how it compares to these values. All right, so to test the tunnel diode, I'll be using the Keithley 236 source measure unit, but you don't need a source measure unit to actually do this test. As long as you have a power supply that has a stable output voltage that you can control in at least 10 millivolt steps, I'll be changing this in 10 millivolt steps, that works well. And I have this set on the compliance mode so that it won't exceed 12 milliamps on the output because I don't want to damage this diode. So if I inadvertently were to increase the voltage too high, you know, it would just limit that current. So again, on a power supply that you're using, you know, you should have that current limiting. You should set that accordingly. And for the current measurement, you can just use a digital multimeter in series with the diode, but this is convenient because the displays are right next to each other. So again, this is sourcing voltage and measuring the current. All right, so let me just move you down here and you can see the diode that I have connected it's down on the bench right here. Little tiny part right there. All right, so I'll start with the reverse voltage. So I'll just turn this down like that. It starts to go to negative voltage. So you can see right away, it's already up to two milliamps of current through the diode, just 20 millivolts. All 
and you can see 10 milliamps and it's just shy of 100 millivolts, you know, 90 millivolts right now. One more step right there. So obviously the reverse current is increasing very, very quickly. And we wouldn't want to exceed that, so no need to go any further because it'll just continue to increase further and further until the uh, diode would be destroyed. So again, that's fitting what, what we saw right here, in this curve. So it's increasing very, very rapidly with the reverse voltage and reverse current. Okay, so now I'll start to increase this with the forward voltage. And right away we're seeing the increase in the current. So 100 millivolts. 10 milliamps right now. Okay, it just started to drop. And that's what you're looking for. So I'm gonna go back again so right around 10 milliamps, that's that peak that we see on the chart right here. So again, it's increased up to this peak right there. A closer again, just in focus. So this peak right here, so we're hitting 10 milliamps right up there. So on the chart up here for the orange white, it says the peak point current, 10 milliamps, right there. Perfect. So that fits, no problems. Oops, get that touched up again. So now let's continue to increase the forward voltage. So this is dropping. So now we're in that region of negative resistance. Still falling down. Four milliamps. Okay, that's down there. Okay, you see that? It started to go back up. So I was, I was increasing the voltage, the current was falling, but now as I increase the voltage a little bit more, the current is coming back up. So right about in there is, that's an increase there, increase there. So that's you know close enough right there. We'll call it uh, 0.75 milliamps or 750 microamps. So I'm just looking at the chart again here and it says, the valley point current would typically be around 900 microamps with a maximum of 1.4 milliamps. So we're within that range. It's just a little bit under, you know, the 900 microamps. So we're 750 microamps. So no problems. I mean, it's very, very close to the published value on that diode. They actually don't give a minimum. So I have my thumb right above the value right here. You can see right, right there, 0.9, 1.4, but a minimum isn't actually specified, but it's very, very close to that value. And again on the chart down in here, we're down in this region where we've hit this valley down in here. So now as I increase the forward voltage, it should start to increase the current again as it comes out of the valley and starts to increase up in this direction. So let's try that. Go touch this back up again here. Sorry for all the nudging of the camera there. Start to increase this, and yes, it is. One milliamp. It's starting to increase. And at this point, as I'm increasing this, that current would want to increase. In fact, it's hit the compliance right there. We wouldn't want to go any higher than that. And it would continue to go up, you know, and higher and higher until the diode would be destroyed. You have to limit it in the circuit and in the design. So we don't want to exceed that. So you can see how the diode is performing and it matches the curve that we can see on the data sheet. So really a tunnel diode is quite simple to test. This is just one way that they can be tested. There are other methods, but this is quite easy to do. And you know, it just takes a power supply that has a fine control of the output voltage. And again, you can use a digital multimeter in the current measurement setting to measure the current through the diode. If a tunnel diode is you know, in the circuit or the project you're working on, you can verify if it's working correctly or not. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, well, you can let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you like the content on this channel, don't forget to subscribe because there'll be many more videos coming up in the near future. Lots of projects in the queue, and you won't want to miss any of those. And don't forget to tap that bell symbol to be notified when I do post a new video. All right, see you next time. Goodbye for now.